and see what happens. So I have some troubleshooting to do here. My little 15 amp, 14 gauge wire, it blew the fuse. Well, hey, welcome back. We're back here in the galley of the Luna again. I just wanted to make a quick follow-up to my last video where I made my power upgrades. I had mentioned that I was going to up some of the wire sizes. Got all those parts in, so we're gonna upgrade it. We're gonna retest everything with this new wiring setup and get it a little closer to real world conditions of when we're actually camping. There were some things I mentioned the last time that weren't quite exactly how they should be. It is very hot out here today. I am already sweating, so let's get started. So some of the upgrades, 10 gauge wire to go from the Victron to the battery with a 10 gauge inline fuse that will have a 40 amp fuse on it, but I'm going to limit the Victron to 30 amps. Here's my little tab connectors here. What I did end up picking up, and it's not necessarily to push more amps or power through to the actual Victron from the Charger One, but when I used my 12 gauge 20 foot extension cables, they barely fit. So I picked up some 30 foot 10 gauge extension cables just to help ease that voltage drop from the length of cable. And because we are gonna be pushing more power, let's get back under the sink and change out that dinky 14 gauge wire for some 10 gauge wire. All right, so here we are back under the sink. You can't really tell on the camera, but here's my battery wires coming out from the Victron to the battery. Here's the current inline fuse. You could probably read that 15 amp fuse max. So that's gotta go if we wanna push more power. Let me get this all disconnected. I'll crimp up the new wiring, put it in there, and then we'll do another test to see exactly how much more charge we get out of the charger one. All right, first order of business. Let's get these battery lugs loose. I know the power is already off. If you want to see how I accomplish that, I highly suggest you go back and watch the original video. I went through how the battery app works and how I can make sure that power is turned off. All right, so this guy's got to go right here. And this guy's got to go. And the next step, let's get these out of the terminals on the Victron. And that is it for these. First order of business, we are going to put a battery terminal lug on the end of the inline fuse. If you don't know, you always want to put your fuse as close to the battery as you can. So we're going to stick it on one end and then we'll just use a butt connector to extend this to reach the Victron. You just stick that in there like that up to your stop. And that's probably not enough. Nope, we're going to crimp off a little more than that. Look at that, perfect. And bingo. We have a good crimp. So now on this side, I'll strip it again and we'll use one of these butt connectors. Now the connectors I'm using, this is just a kit from Amazon. If you are interested, the link will be down in the description. Again, back in the crimpers. Bang, good crimp. Now what I gotta do is take this down to the battery and see how much more I gotta add on to reach to the Victron. What I did temporarily was just put the lug on to hold it up there so that I could see where this butt connector was gonna be. As you can see, I don't need a whole lot of wire. I wanna keep it as short as possible anyway. So I'm gonna run it probably pretty tight here up into the terminal. Let's take a look and see how much we need. Again, the bundle of wire that I bought was from Amazon. I didn't wanna buy you know, 20, 30, 40 foot rolls. So they, I actually found some 10 foot rolls, which is still way more than enough. Always better to have a little extra and you never know if I, I'll probably use this at some point in the future or if I need to make any repairs to this. I have extra wire. So we're gonna hold this guy up like this and we're gonna estimate, plus give it a little, always give yourself, give yourself a little extra. We'll say we're gonna cut it, eh, maybe that's too much. We'll cut it about right there. 
Now on this side, all I gotta do is strip it for this butt connector and then strip it on this side to go into the Victron. Let me test if that strip is good for this. That should probably be good. Yeah, that side was plenty for that. Give it a good pull and we're good. All right, time for the negative side. That's just gonna be a ring terminal on one end and a bare end on the other. So let's do that. Ring terminal's good. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm just gonna loosely put it on here just to hold it in place so I know where it needs to reach to. I'm just gonna kind of run it off to the side here. I would say about right there is good enough. Now that we got all that done, let me get all this wiring reconnected, get it run along the wall here, put one of these little wire keepers in there and reconnect it to the Victron. Now that I got that hooked up, while I'm cleaning up, I'm actually gonna turn my fridge on to get it down to operating temperature. If you watched my last video, the testing that I did, it might have been a little skewed. So I wanna get it down to temperature just to give another real world comparison of what we could expect when we're actually out there camping now that I've upgraded the wiring. Well, for you, it's been a split second. For me, I have now had lunch, I've cleaned everything up, I let the fridge run. It is now down to temperature, so it should just kind of kick on and off while we're doing this test. Okay, the Charger one is on, the Bronco is running. Let's check the Blue Eddy app first. So you can see here, right now, the Victron is still set to its 14 amp max output. You can see we're putting through, while the Charger one thinks it's putting through about 199 watts. So let's check the battery now and see what it's getting. All right, so there you go. Oh, one thing I failed to mention in my last video, if you didn't watch that, I got rid of the gas solenoid valve. So now that is not gonna be drawing power with the galley hatch open. So there you can see the battery itself is getting 125-ish watts. I believe the fridge is currently running. Let's see what it jumps up to when we change the Victron output to 30 amps. I ho I'm hoping I can change it while it's running. Okay, so we are going to change this to 30 and hit OK. Let's see what the Blue Eddy puts through. Woo, look at that, 450 watts. Let's check the battery, 343 watts, max power now. That's crazy, almost 150 extra watts. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut everything down and restart the Bronco so that it can do the full 15 minute run again. You can see there we're at about 74%. If you remember from my last video, we gained about 5%, which is five amp hours because it's a 100 amp hour battery. We'll see what a difference this makes being able to put out 30 amps and I'm gonna be monitoring, just make sure that wiring doesn't get too hot. And if I gotta dial it down a little bit, maybe Maybe down to 28 or so. Let's give this a shot. All right, so the Bronco ran for about 15 minutes. As you saw, I was kind of checking in throughout. I was checking the wire. The positive wire out of the Victron got a little warm, but nothing out of the ordinary for charging a battery. Let's see how much we gained just by upgrading those wires. Almost 10%. So we did almost double our battery recovery. You can see right now the fridge isn't running, but again, like I said, I had it on, left it at its normal temperature. I'm sure it kicked on a few times during that. It's very hot out here today, probably 92. I would say that is not a bad return on investment for some shortened wires and some new extension cables. I think it was totally worth it. And now we can recover some charge on those days where where we don't have good sun. I'm testing it on a day normally that I would be using solar panels, but this setup is for the nice, dreary, cloudy fall and winter days of the Pacific Northwest or anywhere that we may be running into cloudy days and can't catch the sun for a free charge. So I hope you enjoyed this follow-up to the original video. If you have not watched the original video, it'll be linked down below. There'll be a card at the end of the video. Go check it out. You can see the full install and what I did to upgrade my charging capability from the Bronco. You can do this in any car with the Charger One. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.